Good morning. So uh, today, uh, carrying on with Snippy Pixie next as usual. Um, uh, yeah, I left it off yesterday. Um, I was starting to style up the add snippet window. Um, but um, I had also noticed a few problems with my setup. So um, I fixed some of them. Um, so last night I fixed up the resolution of my screen. Um, I ended up having to um, do, so I'm setting the GDT, GDK, GDK scale uh, to two, um, which I'd been doing beforehand, um, but it wasn't really working. Um, but I've also found that I had to do it in my .x profile, um, so that it's inherent inherent in the session, uh, the window session. Um, never thought I had to do that, but um, apparently so. Um, so that's what's happening here. If I've got this file um, available, which is this basically this file here, um, I'm just sourcing it, um, and that means that when the session starts up, it's already got those environment variable set. Um, and so things like um, my, well, so snippet pixie now looks correct, uh, the existing version, um, uh, and including the settings page is all the right size and everything, the size, the icons are correct and all that kind of stuff. So that's good. Um, and that also means that the window in um, the new version is sized correctly as well. So I've had to kind of adjust the size a little bit for that. It comes up a lot bigger now. Um, so, okay, let's, uh, let's see that. So it's, that's, I think that's the standard size now. Um, I've made a couple of adjustments. So this icon is now slightly smaller, um, just a fraction, because it was just overwhelming um, beforehand. Um, and then last night I started playing with the CSS uh, for the um, snippet screen as well. So um, it's now um, got colored backgrounds on the inputs um, and they've got a proper focus that follows, um, including the buttons. Um, and I've just got a little bit, you know, I've just put a little bit of padding in and stuff like that, and uh, you know, sized up and stuff. Um, and I've also, um, so that's kind of stuff, was that that's here. Um, so the inputs have a basic setup here. Um, so we've got a background color and a border color by default. Um, and then obviously I'm setting the color to an input. So I've got this variable here. Where is it? Uh, we're just basically using Nord 6. Um, and then the background is using Nord 1, which is just a slightly lighter color than we have on the base background, which is Nord 0. Um, and then the Nord 6 is the not quite so bright white, I think. Is that right? Oh no, there's the brightest. Um, and then I've adjusted the foreground to be not quite so bright. Just so those the labels and things like that don't don't pop quite so much um, as the text. It's it's hard to see there, but it does make a small difference. Um, and then the inputs. Um, so to get this to work, um, to make it so that the text box stretches. Um, to the bounds, um, and that when I um, adjust the size, it goes with it, no problem, like that, um, down to the smallest there. Um, I've basically had to undo the padding and the margin on the body, make sure they're nothing. Um, and then we have an app container in the HTML. Um, so it's just a div. Um, with an ID, um, and that is what the app hangs off. So when uh, we've got that in the JS, no, uh, here. So when a Svelte app starts up, it's basically just a, 
um, a class that you instantiate and you tell it where to put itself. Um, and so it's looking for the ID there. Um, so basically all I'm doing is making sure that its height of this app container um, inside the body is full height of the view. So that's the 100 uh, VH minus a little bit of margin that I'm putting around everything um, bottom and top as well as the sides. So that makes it just a little bit neater, um, gives it a little bit of um, room to grow and stuff like that. And then the buttons, um, they're pretty simple. Um, I don't think I've got them in here in the button cells. Um, I had to play with the colors and things on there. Um, and I just set it so that um, the basic button, button has um, a little bit of margin to the left so that we've got a bit of a gap there. Um, and then we've got um, a solid border style. So that means we don't have um, any kind of um, sort of shadow effect and stuff that have like a highlight and a low light. And um, we don't get rid of that. Um, and then we give it just a small border width um, and a border radius. I keep I'm in an iron about the width, the radius on that, but I think that what 0.3 kind of seems to work okay. Um, and then I've given it a little bit of box shadow. It's probably hard to see, um, but when you click the button, it go it does remove it a little bit because I've put a, a drop it out later. So it kind of looks like it's active. Um, I might want to change the colors to go with that as well. Um, so it's a little bit more obvious, but at the moment it's fine. Um, and then um, obviously I just gave them a little bit of min minimum width and stuff as well. Um, and then the colors are slightly tweaked as well. So on hover and focus, um, they both get any kind of, um, they get uh, the secondary color as the main fill and the border. Uh, and then obviously the primary has a primary fill, uh, whereas the secondary has just an outline, basically. So that's all I did last night um, while I was watching YouTube and stuff like that. So uh, just tweaking away, um, not stuff that you'd want to watch. Just playing with colors and stuff. So um, now we want to get onto the actual um, meat of the matter um, and start hooking up this add snippet um, form and these buttons so they do something. Before they do that, I'm just going to commit these changes. Because they seem to be working OK. Um, so we've got um, So add button component update styles and snippet right. now I do. Right, so that's all saved off now. Um, so, time to do some actual hooking up of stuff um, and try and work out where we're going to put some of this code. So, in the add snippet, um, the first thing we want to do um, is find a way of getting back to the, uh, the main screen. So, at the moment, if you come in here, there's no way back. Uh, the, the cancel button doesn't work. And obviously when you hit save, it doesn't do anything yet either. So we need to do something about that. So in so we have this secondary button, um, which is going to be the cancel. Um, and we need to basically add a click handler for it. Um, I'm going to do that, as I always do, in a function uh, rather than in line. 
I prefer that because then if I ever need to um, tweak it in any way, I've got uh, got it there and there, and it's pretty obvious what it does then as well. Um, so just want to double check what I did in the ad. Uh, no, so the welcome. How I named it. And to snip it down there. Yeah, okay. That's fine. It gives it the function. So this is going to be um, a can <coughs> cancel handler, I think, is all I need to do. Um, I'm not going to take the event. Don't need it. Uh, and so in this case, I need to pop back to wherever I came from because it might not just be the welcome screen at some point it might be um, the list of existing snippets um, yeah so I think we need to do it here I'm going to import pop this felt spa router and it doesn't want to complete and I don't know why okay that should in theory do the trick once we hook it up. So on this button, so we've already got in the button component, on the button itself, we are basically bubbling up the click handler. We're saying on click, do nothing and just bubble. Um, so in here, we can use it. So we'll do on click and then we'll just do cancel handler without those uh, parens because we just want to call the function. Oh, okay. Now we're getting some format in there. So let's do it differently here and break it up. Actually, we'll do this. That should work. That's a bit better. Okay. All right. Let's see if that works. <clears throat> so in here, um, it's not going to work, is it? Because I oh, it did. Yeah, of course. That's quite good. I like how Wells Dev um, doesn't destroy everything when it does the refresh, the hot reloading. So there we go, we can go back. That's good. So um, so that's fine, that's one thing. Um, and now we also need to um, start doing something with the data. And let's uh, commit that. Oops. that just now. Don't need to be working the uh, CI server for that. Um, okay, now comes the fun bit. So as, as we add stuff here, um, so on that um, and then again here we will oh, day no 
um, that kind of stuff. Behind the scenes, um, these two variables are getting populated uh, because they are bound um, on the input here as the value for abbreviation and then on the text area um, it says the body variable there. So we need to do something with it. We need to send it somewhere where it's going to be processed and saved by the snippet pixie daemon, which we haven't even got up and running yet. So this is where we're going to start using uh, some of the functionality that Wales gives us um, so that it can take data from the front end into the go back end um, and then do something with it, which in this case, we're going to have to set up the dbus server communications. So, fun times, here we go. Um, this is all new to me because I've not used Wells in depth yet. So we have app. Um, when when the Wales app comes up and running, comes up and running, gets up and running, um, it instantiates app. Um, and then is that it? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't do anything with that. Right, okay. Um, and then binds any interfaces um, of that app to the front end. So, Let's start doing some things here. What we're going to do is we're going to start um, just making sure we are getting data back correctly. We'll do some, maybe do some logging or something. Um, and then um, and then we'll start sending it on. So what we need here is a new function. This is all package main. Hmm. I could, I suppose. I'll start off by adding a function here and then I might move it out to a separate file later just to keep it clean. But we'll start here, we'll just get, get something going. Um, so uh, we need basically to do something like this. These are all hanging off. Um, the app instance, um, so they're going to be bound uh, to the front end as callable functions. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do um, we're going to export it, so it's going to have to be um, capital. We're going to have add snippet and this is where we're going to have to make some decisions as to what we send back and forth and how that's going to work we 
What did I do in the CLI? In the CLI, oh, so maybe in the DBus. Yeah. Right, so the, there we're taking separate fields. And we're turning a snippet and potentially an hour. Okay. I'm going to basically do the same, although I haven't got any of the debus stuff up and running yet. Which is something I probably should do early on. But we'll start off with the dummy function first. So I will take Let's do that. This bird's going nuts behind me in the bushes. Okay. Let's just, um, what should we return here as a quick and dirty dummy thingy. Uh, let's do return Neil and Hello world. All right. Now we need to import snippet. That's done it there. Double check, that's right. Okay, one thing is, don't have a mod in there, but we do. Right, so. Yeah, I wonder how that, how's that going to work? Hmm, okay.
Not sure if that's going to work just yet. Oh, it did bounce. Now, where did it get Snippet Pixie from? The snippets from. So have I accidentally published all this stuff then? Or is this local? Hmm. I wonder, have I actually done that? That's not what I intended yet. <laughs> Oops. Well, that's some of anyway. Interesting. Doesn't really matter. It's not usable. You'd be a fool to use it. Okay, at least we got this. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Don't really care, I'm doing it in the open anyway. That's incorrect. Oh, that's actually correct because some of it is failing at the moment. Okay. I should probably move on and start using workspaces because I believe that would make it easier for me to stop these things from leaking too early, but it doesn't matter. Okay, all right, I'm not going to worry about that. It is what it is, and I'll probably... Um, probably take out the replaces in the other one anyway. Okay. So, in here, we are now returning on that snippet. We're just returning an error saying hello world. So, in the front end, we need to do something with that. Um, we'll do a quick and dirty just to see whether it works. So we'll do function um, 
save handler here. And we will do, I can't remember. Can't remember what it's. Let's look at the documentation for Wales. Oh, thank you. Okay, docs. So, blah, 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 do the thing. Done all this. Getting started. Do the project. Do the application. Do the do. How does it work? Do the greet. Front end window, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Can't remember what it, what it hangs off, but it's uh, attached to the window. So, okay. Let's go, yeah. Okay, so I should be able to do go main app and snippet and get back stuff. And we'll see what we get back. How does that work with Evers though? Let's have a quick look at the reference. Okay. So how do I use the Okay, 
Windows stuff I don't need just yet. Dialog I don't need just yet. So really... Hmm. Okay, well, I'll just have to find out. I'll give it a go. Um, okay, I'll just give it a go and see what happens. That log stuff might be interesting, though. If I can work out where that is in the front end. Is it just in runtime? Need a little example here, I think. Okay, let's do this. Um, so, save handler, we're going to go um, go main should come up. Is it coming up? Add. No, it's not. Oh, it's app, isn't it? Hmm, go main app and snip it. So that's not resolving yet. Wonder why. Could be going on just to having a funny old time, but Of course, I've got to import it, haven't I? All right, and that models thing is interesting. All right, so. Let's try that. So let's do that here. Does that imp no. It just wells chairs. Hmm. 
Where is that emulation? Oh, I need to go back a few, don't I? So I'm in that snippet and I need to go. OK, let's do this properly. So import go from back up into source and then to ours.js go Bindings. And then we'll see what happens now. Go dot main dot app. Um, still not picking it up. We'll see what happens when I save. It's there. Anyway, we're going to pass in an abbreviation body um, and what we're going to do with it because we need to log it. Yes, we can do this. That's effectively what we need. But we'll just do, um, well, we could do a console.log. And then we'll see what the other one does in a minute. Uh, save handler needs to be used. Oops. On click save. All right, see what happens. I'm not sure it's going to work. Um, okay, we're not going to get much value out of this, are we? Because, uh, so I've noticed that there's a bit of a, a bit of a bug with this. So I can do an inspect. Um, but as soon as I try and resize this, I lose my front end. Um, unhandled promise, rejection, hello world. Okay, so it worked.
got back stuff from the go side of things. Okay. But I think what I'll do is I will run this again. Let's move that over there so we can play with it. And I'll just reduce that down again in size. To increase the border size. Okay, but what we'll do is we'll go and look at it in the browser. Sorry about it. Here. Okay. So, got a nice big console here. Now you can see here, it welds dev, does it? Quite a nice console output there. And uh, so if we go here and we do wibble, wobble, save, we've got an uncaught error basically in the promise. Okay, um, all right, let's do something sensible here. Um, what are we going to do? Um, presumably, I could catch the error. Or should I? Should I do something else? If What I could do and that's what I need to do, isn't it? But I don't know. I don't know how the runtime reacts. Um, what we could do. So we've got the basic one there.
kind of want to do something a little bit more robust here than just whacking in here. But I don't know how. I've still got the runtime open, I haven't. It's interesting. Got a snippet there. Hasn't got anything in it. Alright, so that's for that. But it hasn't got anything in it yet because I haven't done anything with it. Maybe. And then in the bindings, it's the same, isn't it? Yeah, okay. What I'm thinking is... No, I could just, I should just do this. So, I should basically do Can I do um, with MDN? I wonder if it'll tell me whether I can do like a try on a promise. I can, can't I? So if I do that. Um, So that would be okay, got those two things here. What I'm thinking of doing is having a little wrapper um, so that I can always catch my errors. And I'm just going to have a little API function that does this. Because I generally always have an error thrown and I want to make sure. That's not going to give me what I want. Do the catch right. I could do it there.
So I could do it on everything rather than do it, I try wrap it. At least it would be local to the thing. Maybe I'm overthinking. I'm trying. Maybe I'm trying to. Um, I just know that I've got lots of functions to call. I'm just wondering whether I should have a little map that does the work rather than doing it this way. Just do it this way. If yeah, if if that's the way that the runtime works, okay. Let's try it. Um, so what we'll do is We'll keep those packets. I was going to take them out because they're not necessary. But if I have multiple results, does that work? Okay. And then here we'll do. Do this um, and we'll do in theory window on time log here we go log error and in theory that So in here, in theory, window, one time, there was another one that was in my print. What was the print one? Lock print. Hmm. Not seen it. Okay, just do info. Uh, right, okay, why is that complaining then? Yeah, we'll see. So I'll just refresh that and then I'll do some stuff here, hit save and we break it.
log did not work. That one. Did I get the right function? Well, I must have because it was completed. Not sure why that did not work. Right. <laughs> Okay, because it's down here, it's doing it. <laughs> it's in the console. It's running it on the window, not the uh, contents. Interesting, of course. So here, if I do another one, uh, warning, just to make sure this is what I'm seeing. So that's it running. If I do same up here. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Not sure what I'd use that for. But anyway, uh, for me at the moment, well, I suppose it's when you're debugging here, it's okay. That's quite handy, I suppose. Okay. I was a bit confused by that. Um, right. Probably means I need more coffee. I had a big mug as well. Then running out of time. Okay, um, I don't think I'm going to get much more done before I can run out. I uh, have to run out. Um, maybe... Maybe we should try a different return here just to make sure everything's okay. What I do, um, Do this. Do an abbreviation. Um, is it a percent string I can use? I'm not sure. 
and uh, body again percent string it might have to be percent v for value um, and then we'll just do abbreviation body and nil as the error so it doesn't like that Oh yeah, okay. What can I use instead of that then? Is there, um, see, I don't know how to do formatted strings without format. And that goes. I just want a string back and a format. S print, of course. Oh. All right, S print F. That's the one. Yeah, of course not. That would make sense. What am I doing? Right. Oh, I really do need to. Uh... Right. What we need is a snippet. Snippet. And uh, abbreviation. Yes, abbreviation. And the body is body. That's a new one. And that's capitalized. Okay, now let's see what we get back. This could be a mess. It went bang. Oh. Now it's working. Interesting. Object, object. Okay. Oh, I didn't, um, yeah, I didn't put anything that I could see on here, though. Do a console. Don't know if I need to refresh that. Anyway, it's done. There we go. So we have an object. It's filled in an ID and last used and all that kind of stuff. That's good. Okay. Not 
sure how that will work. But it does work. We are getting structured data back as an object, which matches the uh, fields. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, so, okay, so we've got plenty to do, but we can catch the error. Well, what happens if I do both? Will it go bang? So if I do that, and I do... Um, It's capitalized. All right. So if I were turned by the error and this, oh, it's gone bang again. That's interesting. Okay. So I suspect on here we're going to get just the error. And it's better to just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the ever overrides. But it is recognized as an error. No matter what, which is good. I like that. That's good. That's handy. That's handy. Good. Okay. Right, well, gotta go. Um so let's close these things off. So we're at the point where we can start um building out the actual functionality of taking this data that's coming into the back end of the Go app, the abbreviation and body, um, and we can send it off, in theory, to the daemon um, and get some of the result back and then pass it back to the front end. Um, that's something. So that's good. That's good. Okay. Well, next time we'll have to start mucking about with that. Oh, cool. Well, thanks for watching. Um, and until next time, uh, take care.